Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you're doing well wherever you are and welcome back to my channel. And if it's your first time here, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Today I'm going to talk about crafting beautiful blue hour images in Luminar. Now, as you know, I love Luminar. I use it all the time. And uh, what you may or may not know is I love to shoot in cities and I absolutely adore shooting cities at blue hour. It's quite possibly my favorite subject matter and time of day. Just because the lights come on and things get a little twinkly and sparkly and that kind of stuff. And I just love the, the interplay or sort of the contrast between the, the warmer lights in a city and then the bluer kind of color um, of the blue hour sky. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. And I'm going to start with this photo. Now this is the finished product. Let me show you the before photo. There it is. Uh, quite obviously this was taken in London. Um, a number of years ago, actually, it's it's a fairly older photo that I came across and started editing, and then I kind of liked what I did, so I thought I'd share it as a video. So I was on Westminster Bridge here at Blue Hour, firing away, and obviously Big Ben um, and the clock tower, you know, the whole thing there is kind of uh, the subject. And uh, anyway, I just like this scene, and so here I am, um, and that's what I came up with. And my intent was to create a bit more dramatic, more interesting, and, and you know, dare I say, moody kind of look to it. So that's what I've done. Let me jump into the filters and we'll go ahead and walk through the edit process. Just one second. Okay, so the first thing I did was crop it. So if you go into the crop tool, you can see this started out as a bigger photo in terms of the, uh, the dimensions of it. And I cropped it down to a 16 by 10 ratio. It was shot with a full frame Nikon probably six or seven years ago. And at the time, I was shooting also with a wide-angle lens, which on that uh, uh, that camera, the 14 to 24 that I had, the wide-angle lens was just really wide, and I shot with it all the time. I was addicted to it, and so there's really too much in this photo, so I wanted to crop it down. I found that the 16 by 10 ratio worked best. I wanted to keep that bicycle that's painted in the bike lane there, and obviously the buildings and the, uh, the sort of the walkway leading towards Big Ben, but I felt like there's a little too much sky and a little extra on the left-hand side, so I got rid of all of that. And so there's my base photo after, after crop, but no edits. And so the first thing I did is just use the Accent AI filter, and as you can see, it brightened it significantly. And I moved that to about 65, but I did a little masking as well. And let me show you what I did. All I did was just erase the AI from the face of the clock tower. And that's simply because if I did not do it, um, it, would, it was blowing it out. It was just making it white. And I like that kind of orangey looking clock tower. You can see the hands on it. You can see the little tick marks for the hours. I wanted to keep that because it's cool looking. And so I just masked AI out of that one tiny little bit. Um, after that, it was onto the tone filter. So here, uh, a little bit of an exposure bump, a little contrast bump. I took Smart Tone down, and so Smart Tone, if you're not familiar with it, it has the uh, impact of, if you're taking it to the left, to sort of quote unquote darken the photo, it'll darken the light spots without really darkening the stuff that's already dark. And conversely, if you go to the right and drag it to the right to sort of brighten the photo, it'll brighten the dark spots without brightening the stuff that's already bright. So it's really good at that. So I use that and then highlights and shadows. And basically I'm just rearranging the light um, and reduce the whites as well. So came a long way and now we're getting into a, a little bit more my look of a photo. It's certainly a lot less flat than it was, but some of the colors and stuff need work. So we're gonna get to that. Um, next up, I gave it a little bump in clarity just to give it a little bit more depth and a little kick. Um, and then I came to brilliance and warmth. And so I gave it a little more vividness and then I cooled it off a bit. And as you can see, that really did increase the reds and oranges in the photo. Let me show you that before and after again. There's the before and there's the after. So it's probably a little bit too much. And so I came over here to saturation vibrance and I simply just took the saturation down. I don't wanna overdo it. I am making a little bit of a dramatic kind of look, but I don't want it to be sort of off the charts crazy colorful. So took the saturation down, left vibrance at zero. Um, and then color balance, one of my favorite filters. I didn't do a lot with it here, as you can tell, but in the shadows, it didn't do anything. Midtones, I took away from the cyan a little bit towards the red. And highlights, I basically made them bluer, right? So more to the cyan red and then more away from yellow and towards blue. If you look at the sky, for example, um, it's changed color a little bit. And uh, I just like that look a little bit more. It sort of fits more the mood I'm going for. If you aren't familiar with color balance, I just went through that really quickly. I've got several videos. Just look back in the history of my videos. I, I talk about color balance a lot. And so there's two or three videos that are just about color balance. 
and, and that'll help you get uh, sort of your arms around it um, if you need that. Uh, adjustable gradient is a, uh, an incredible filter, so I use that next. And as you can see, that had a fairly Im uh, large impact on the photo. So for the top portion of the photo, sorry, my nose is itching, um, I dropped the exposure and increased contrast and made it cooler. And so you can tell that that had a big impact. If you look at the top of the photo, there's the before and there's the after. So you can see it's starting to get a little bit more of that drama. It looks a little bit more... Uh, a little darker really because of the contrast and the drop in exposure and then over on the bottom i did some minor tweaks here and there slightly brightened the uh, bottom um, added some contrast and also uh, cooled it off a little bit so that's the first layer and you know we've gone you know not include the cropping uh, not including that we went from this base photo to that and so this is usually where i, I start to sort of make decisions sometimes i put these things on you know simmer to use a cooking analogy and just let it sit there for a little while until I know uh, if I want to make more changes or not. And so, of course I did. Um, and I just decided to come back and make more changes. And so, because I liked where I was, I didn't want to make these changes to that same layer. So you don't have to add a new layer just to stick you know, a few more filters on it. But a lot of times I'll do that simply because if I like sort of the place that I'm at with the filters that I've already used, I just want to wall that off and say, all right, that's cool. I'm not going backwards from there and I don't want to confuse what I've done. I like it. So if I screw up or get something weird, I can just delete the whole layer and not worry about, oh gosh, you know, when did I uh, make the moves that started making me not like it versus when I really did like it. And so that's why I just separate layers. But with all the filter uh, masking and things like that in Luminar, you don't really even have to do that. I do it just to keep my mind free of having to remember things. So that's a, a thing. Um, okay, so next was HSL, and as you can see, that had a big impact on the photo. Let me show you again. Sky was a lot brighter, colors were a bit more saturated and rich, and I brought it down. I basically made it look a little bit more realistic and a little bit darker. So um, the first thing I did is a uh, hue in orange. It was, let me show you again the before. It was getting kind of a really rich, uh, getting kind of neon orange, and if you've seen it, it is very much orange, but it's more like that. It's a little tamer, and so I wanted to tame that. Um, and then I went to saturation. I did take the saturation down a little bit because again, it was getting too intense for the orange. And then the purple and magenta I reduced as well because it was this part of the sidewalk that sort of has that hue to it. Let me show you the before. Um, really looking pinkish kind of purple here. And you know, I don't, I don't really remember. I mean, I know it's kind of a colored walk, but I don't really think it's really pink or purple. So I wanted to pull those colors down. And so that's what I did with saturation. And then luminance. Um, I bumped up the luminance of the orange a little bit and then I took it down on the blue pretty significantly. So one more time, let me turn off HSL and there's the before and then there's the after. So I think I've got it looking a bit more dramatic, but also a bit more realistic, less saturated, a little bit more, um, I don't know, gritty maybe a little bit. So, um, and then here I wanted to just add a touch of romance, if you will. So I added image radiance. As you can see, it did darken the image a little bit. Uh, and that was all I did. I basically just uh, added image radiance and just give a little bit of that romantic glow. I think it works really well on sunsets and blue hours, um, especially a blue hour like in a city like this where, you know, the truth is, let me let me turn that off again. Um, some of these buildings are brighter without the added contrast of image radiance, but I don't really care. To me, they're not the focal point of the photo. To me, it's sort of the street leading, you know, a line leading straight to Big Ben. Uh, and of course, the clock tower is a focal point. So I really wanted to focus in on that and didn't really care that I added contrast and sort of darkened some of those other elements in the photo. It was kind of immaterial to me. Um, next up was structure. And this is where I did negative structure. And I applied this just to the sky. And basically, it's purely just to smooth out the sky. I did a video about noise reduction uh, you know, a week or two ago. You might want to check that out. But you can use structure negatively. In other words, go in negative 100 and that sort of thing to create a smooth effect. And that's what I did here. And I will just show you where the mask is. Basically, just across the sky, right? So that was all I did with structure. Um, but then I wanted to use structure again. So I went and got that filter a second time. You can do that on the same layer. And as you can see, I added the structure to the, the bottom part of the photo. So let me show you the uh, the mask this time and it's just the bottom i got the bridge and this area over here in the street simply because i wanted to create a little bit more sort of crunch or punch to that part of the photo it is a walkway it gets you know thousands of people walking across it every day 
and it was a little too smooth before. And so adding the structure, I think, gave it a little bit of grit and maybe a little bit of depth. And it, to me, it looks more real. And so um, that's where I was. And then I was at that point, and once again, I sort of come to decision mode is like, hey, Jim, are you, are you done with this? Or are you gonna sit on it? And so I sat on it a little bit, and then I came back. And that's, again, same reason as before. That's why I added a new layer. There's no uh, custom masking about the layer or anything like that that causes me to do it. It's simply, hey, I got to a place that I'm really happy with and I might not wanna move from, so let me just stop and anything else I'm gonna do be on a new layer. So if I come back and decide I don't like what I'm getting on this next layer, I can just delete it and say, all right, then I'm done and I'll have this and I'm happy with it. Or conversely, you know, if I turn that layer off and decide I didn't like any of that, I could leave the photo as I did on the base layer. So that's why I went and did these uh, multiple layers. So hope that helps. Uh, okay, vignette. So for me, um, I wanted to add a vignette because what I really want to do is accentuate um, the center of the photo. That's what a vignette does, right? Now you can place the center anywhere you want, the center of the vignette. It's not the center of the photo, of course. Um, I, I left it pretty much in the center because the way I framed this, I pretty much put Big Ben sort of dead on right there. And so as you can see, I, I uh, created a fairly sizable vignette and also added some inner light. So look again at the difference. Here's the before. To me, it's a little too dark in the center of the photo, and that's why I love that inner light slider on the vignette filter. I use it probably about every time I add a vignette. And with a vignette, you know, you darken the edges, but I'm brightening the center, and I think that gives it a little bit more pop and makes it a little bit more interesting and dramatic and really helps focus your attention, which of course a vignette is supposed to do. So having done that, I then looked at um, this little guy over here, and what I don't want to lose is that bicycle. Now, it's not totally dark, but the vignette is starting to creep on it. In fact, I think earlier I had a little bit bigger vignette, um, something like that. And the vignette is starting to creep into that little painted bicycle, which indicates it's a bike lane. And I framed this photo on purpose with that there because I like it to be kind of an anchoring element in the frame. And you can see it's a bike, uh, it's a bike lane, it's kind of saying go that way, and it leads you right where you want to go, which is to look at Big Ben. And that's why I left it, uh, that's why I shot it that way, but that's also why I want to leave that in there. And I want to make sure it's bright enough to see. And with the vignette that I added, it's kind of creeping into it. And so here's what I did. I just took the exposure slider, I bumped up the exposure, and then I applied it with a radial mask. So let me just show you. That's all I did right there. That's a radial mask with the exposure slider. So I just said, hey, just drag the exposure. And all I did is I looked at, um, just that piece of the photo and I ignored the rest as I dragged the exposure slider because it is applying it you know, across the entire image. And then once I got that section of photo looking about how I wanted, I just went and dropped a radial mask on it, which created that sort of circle and I positioned it in such a way that it would allow me to um, brighten that. So let me turn it off. And there we go, a little bit darker and on. Now it's gonna be a little bit lighter. Now, it's not a significant change. You can always come in here afterwards now that you've got the mask in place and you can see, you know, you can go as bright as you want or as dark as you want. I think I was at 31 or something. So, you know, um, I'll, there's 33, that'll work. I simply, um, I don't wanna over brighten it and cause you to be distracted by it, but I definitely wanna keep it bright even though the vignette's kind of tugging the edge of it, I want to keep it bright because to me it's, it's a leading element in the photo. Um, and then what I noticed was the street in the rest of the bike lane um, is a little bit dark as well. So I just did the same thing, slightly different number, but I did that with a brush. So I just went, um, added the exposure uh, filter again, moved it, uh, and then masked it in. This time I just masked it in with a brush, and you can see I just kind of painted it um, there across uh, the bike lane. And so uh, that's at 38. So to show you more succinctly what I've done, right? If I drag the uh, exposure slider all the way, you can see what I've done. But you know, I'm going to leave it something like that so that I can get full visibility into that bike lane. And I think it sort of helps direct the viewer's attention. Uh, and that's really it. So let me show you the before and after. There's the before, and there's the after. Much more dramatic, higher contrast, more color pop, a little bit of structure. Uh, a smoother sky, which was the negative structure, some shadow in the uh, side parts of the photo that I don't really want you looking at. That's not really the point. To me, the point is, uh, you know, the leading line into Big Ben. And there's some folks walking and that sort of thing, which um, I don't, to me, doesn't really distract from the photo, but it may to some people. 
But there's again the before and the after. And let me show you a split screen. Here we go. You can see we punched up the colors a bit. Um, you can also see that we were able to accentuate some of the light there that's coming off of Big Ben, shining down, and also uh, you know the street uh, street lights, and just made a, a, a huge difference. I also kind of like that little radial uh, mass trick with the exposure slider to help brighten that one tiny little sort of circular area. And that's how I do it, my friends. Um, now, every photo is different, of course, so these are some general tips. Um, my workflow might vary from time to time, depending on the photo, but this is a good representative example of how I would walk through this kind of shot. So I hope that it helps, and thanks for watching. I appreciate it very much. I'll see you next time, my friends. If you haven't yet, like the channel, um, or excuse me, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, let me know what you think, share with your friends, all that good stuff. You know what to do, and I appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Take care, and adios.